All right, so let's discuss another oscillating system, which is the simple pendulum. This is something you've all seen in everyday life, but um, an example from uh, another applet from your book. Uh, here's a applet showing a mass, the blue object here, um, that's suspended by a string or a, a rod of some sort attached at a fixed point but allowed to rotate. And so if I, um, and there's gravity present. So if I displace it here, gravity is going to pull it downward, but this, the string will keep it um, moving along an arc, and you get an oscillation set up as such. Uh, all right, so let's analyze that oscillation. Um, so let's first draw a picture here. So I have my uh, fixed point here, and then uh, my string or rod of length, let's say L. And then I have my mass m here, um, and gravity is acting down, All right? And so if I label this, um, here's a vertical. Um, uh, there's an angle that the string makes with respect to the vertical. We'll call that theta. And we're going to consider motion um, of this object along an arc. Okay, um, there's various ways to analyze this. The book analyzes it using linear forces in motion. In class, I will do it using energy. Um, here, what I'll do is I'll consider angular motion. So we're going to consider motion along this arc, and we'll use concepts such as torque and angular acceleration. So if I look at this um, this system, the gravitational force uh, is acting straight down here. Okay, so here's my force due to gravity. I can decompose this. I'm interested in motion along the arc. So I'm going to use the cylindrical coordinate system. We're going to have theta be one variable. R will be another variable um, where R hat points along um, the radius at the location of interest. So R hat um, would be in this direction at this location. Um, so the, the force I can decompose into those different variables. So I have a um, a force in the radial direction here, and then there's a force component that's in the theta direction here. Okay. Um, now there is no motion in the radial direction, so there's force balance there. This this the string basically keeps this object on an arc and has no motion in the radial direction. So if I consider the r hat direction, um, the force due to gravity in that direction will be mg cosine theta. Okay, that's acknowledging that this angle here is the same as this angle. Okay, and that's uh, going to be equal to the um, tension. Okay, and the tension is the force that the string or the rod exerts um, to keep the mass, at, you know, moving in a, an arc. Okay. All right, so there's no acceleration in the radial direction. I just get a balance of forces. Now, in the theta direction, okay, there's going to be a force due to gravity that's unbalanced, okay? So there's going to be acceleration that results because of this unbalanced force. And that's going to be minus mg sine theta, okay? And the minus sign comes from a choice of coordinate system here. So what I'm going to do is choose a cylindrical coordinate system where the z vector is coming out of the page. Okay, so z hat is positive out of the page. What that means is that the um, theta direction is positive going this way. So theta hat is positive in the counterclockwise direction. All right, and so the force as I've drawn it here is in the negative theta direction. Okay. I didn't find positive angles to be going away from vertical in the counterclockwise direction. All right, so now I want to analyze this motion. I want to find an equation for the angle as a function of time. Um, and the way I'll approach that is by uh, using angular um, variables. I'll look at uh, not a force balance, but a torque balance on this object. So I know if there's a net torque on an object, um, it results in angular acceleration. So the um, torque is equal to the moment of inertia of the object in question multiplied by its angular acceleration alpha. Okay. Um, and to remind you, the torque, if I have a force acting on an object, the torque will be, um, I have to pick a point about which I 
want to calculate rotational tendency to rotate. And in this case, the point that matters, because I know it rotates about this fixed point. Um, I'll try to go up here and mark it. So I'm going to rotate around this point here. Okay. And so I'm going to consider um, forces acting, uh, torques acting about that point. And so the torque will be the lever arm, which is the distance from my point of rotation, that fixed point, to the location where the force acts um, across the force itself. Okay. All right, so if I write this down now based on my drawing, um, the torque on this uh, mass string system, the lever arm will be the length of the string, which is L, um, and it's in the R hat direction. Okay, that's the direction away from the point of rotation. And I cross that with the force. Now, there's two components to the force, is radial and theta, but the radial component crossed with this R hat term here um, will go to zero. And so the only uh, component that matters is the component that causes the motion, which is the F theta component. So that's a minus M G L. Oops, sorry. No L there yet. Okay. Minus M G times sine theta theta hat. Okay. All right. And so now um, I can write down the answer. It'll be minus MGL sine theta, and R cross theta is Z hat. Okay. All right. And in class, I'll give a, a little spiel about how to get that. Um, okay. So that's the magnitude of the torque. Um, now I'm going to equate this to the angular acceleration times the moment of inertia. So um, I know that this is equal to I times alpha. Okay. And I know the angular acceleration is always normal to the direction of um, the rotation, the plane of the rotation. Okay. So in this case, the angular rotation and the torque are in the Z direction. So I can connect, oops, I can connect the um, angular acceleration to the variable um, theta, as I know that um, uh, alpha is just the second derivative of the angle theta in time. So I'll use double dots here. And I know it's in the z hat direction. So if I now rewrite um, my expression above here, Okay, um, what I have is that I theta double dot equals minus M G L sine theta. Okay, um, or I can rewrite this as theta double dot is minus M G L over the moment of inertia times sine theta. Okay. Now, this expression is not simple harmonic motion. So simple harmonic motion that we looked at for a spring mass system, we had x double dot equals negative something times x. So this equation is more complicated. Um, so it turns out a simple pendulum is not a simple harmonic oscillator. Okay. But it approximates one for small angles of theta. So if, if the angle is small, so in other words, if theta is not too big, small compared to one, um, then I can approximate the sine function. Okay, so sine of theta, I can Taylor expand this, and the first term in the Taylor expansion is theta, um, and then I have higher order corrections. Okay, and the next correction will go like, so I'll say of order theta cubed, and there'll be a theta to the fifth term, and so forth and so on. And for small values of theta, theta cubed is much smaller than theta, and we can ignore it. And in that case, you get theta double dot is approximately minus mgl over the moment of inertia times theta. And that's our simple harmonic um, oscillator expression. And we know how to solve that. We get um, that theta is equal to uh, the general solution is cosine omega t plus some phase factor phi as before. Um, that's theta. And uh, we know that the frequency is given as the square root of the coefficient multiplying theta. So that's going to be square root 
of m g l over the moment of inertia. Okay. Okay, so for small angle of oscillation, if we start, we don't have too big of a, an angle. Um, the uh, pendulum looks like a simple harmonic oscillator. We know what the frequency is. Now, the expression we have here for the frequency is generic to any object that we uh, acts like a pendulum. So it doesn't have to be a, a point mass on a string. It could be, for instance, a baseball bat that you hold at one end and let it oscillate like a pendulum. Okay, and there, if you know the moment of inertia of the object, um, then you can calculate the frequency. Now the length here, L, in that case, will be the distance to the center of mass of the object. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, but now let's consider the case where I have a, a simple point mass at the end of a string. And in that case, um, the moment of inertia, to remind you, is just the mass times the length of the string squared. Okay. So in that case, what I get is that the frequency of the pendulum, of a simple pendulum with point mass at the end of a string, just looks like root g over l. Okay, And so it's independent of the mass. Um, the only thing that matters is gravity and the, um, uh, the length of the object. Um, now the frequency gets higher for a higher gravitational pull. So if you're on a different planet with a stronger gravity, uh, take Jupiter for example, um, then the oscillation is quicker because the restoring force is larger. Okay. Um, now the, the length of the uh, pendulum string enters in the denominator. So for larger lengths, you get a slower uh, oscillation. And that's just because for a, uh, basically the, the distance that the object has to travel along the arc, um, so for the same value of theta that you travel, the actual distance traveled uh, goes like the length of the string. So for longer lengths of the string, it has to go further, and it takes longer for that reason, for the same motion in theta. And so that's you know, to give you some physical intuition as to why the frequency scales that way. Okay, I'll stop here.